Hey YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Tinker with Tools. As we were talking last week about the Makita impact driver, one of the things I emphasized is that it's not necessarily going to always be about power and speed when using that impact driver. Well, the impact driver we're going to talk about today very much is all about speed and power. And although it gives up some of maybe the creature comforts or niceties that you might find on other impact drivers, that speed and power is certainly something impressive, especially when we talk about it being the first offering from a brand new tool company. That's right, today we're gonna to be talking about Flex and their top of the line impact driver. So let's get into it on Tinker with Tools. All right, so if you're like me, you spend plenty of time on YouTube watching different tool reviews. And as you do that, you sometimes get served up ads for either upcoming events or product showcases for these tools. When COVID hit, that was one of the nice things, I guess I could say, one of the very few nice things about COVID is it actually allowed some of us who don't get to go and attend these events, the ability to see them online as many of them were moved to virtual events. Well, the Flex Face Off was one of those. And although that actual event, does have some mixed reviews and even me even for me i think i was holding out on purchasing anything from flex for a long time because i just didn't feel like their brand of marketing was something i wanted to support but as i saw more and more offerings from them the tools really do kind of speak for themselves and so when i had an opportunity i did pick up the flex impact driver to give it a run and see how it compares so the one we're talking about today is this it is the fx 1371a there's no fancy word or there's no fancy description or anything that I can think of for it other than it's their three speed brushless impact driver. It does have a lot of the same features that you're gonna find on other tools with the different speed selectors, the variable speed trigger, but there are a few things that are quirky about it. And at this point in time, I don't know if those things that are quirky are actually going to be favorites or if they're going to be duds, almost like the Milwaukee installation drill driver speed selector which although it's different and innovative, is definitely not a winner in my book. So when I talk about some of the things that are different, we'll get a little bit of a close up here. The collet on this impact driver is actually quite a bit more shallow than what I've come to expect on impact drivers. It's shallower than any impact driver I've ever used. And if you go to use it as a traditional collet where you have to pull it to release the bit, it makes it a little bit hard to get a hand on, especially if you're wearing gloves with it but they did think of something, so I have to give them that. They have given you this little tiny button in front that if you can see this, it actually moves the collet around and will allow you to insert and take out the bit. Now, unfortunately, this is not a quick insert collet, but at least they've given you that there. Now, time will tell if it's a nice feature or if it's something that I'd rather them not have, but it is something to talk about. Additionally, down here, they do have their speed selector and they do have two tightening modes, and then they do have their traditional three speeds. So it's not necessarily a four full speed like we saw last week with the Makita, but we do have three individual speeds and they do offer varying degrees of power. Now power is where this one really comes to shine. Talking in the top tier, we are gonna have 2,500 inch pounds of torque. Now for reference, the M18 fuel impact driver that is the fastest thing we've tested so far actually offers only 2,000 inch-pounds of torque. Now, although inch-pounds is not everything, that is a pretty big increase if, they're, if their tool can back it up. When it comes to RPMs, they're also at the top of the class there with 4,000 RPMs. They also have 4,450 impacts per minute, which is the highest number I've seen listed on any sort of impact driver. So those numbers really are something to behold. And if it can back those up, then this should really be the most powerful and quickest potential impact we've ever tested. Now, when it comes to the downside of flex impacts, the couple of things that I can really think of, as I mentioned, no quick insert call it. The grip is a little bit bumpier than I like, although I do think it would give you good grip if you were wearing a glove. It just, when you're using a bare hand, it really just doesn't seem to be all that nice to hold. It's almost like some of the older rigid impacts that just had a ton of different texture. In fact, if you actually take a look at the grip, there are three different texture patterns on the grip alone. 
And so as you go ahead and grab it, there's just a lot, there's just not a lot of smooth area on there. And so although it probably will offer you a decent grip, it's just not that nice to hold. The other thing, especially with the five amp hour battery, this thing is heavy. And I say it relative, obviously it's still a small impact, but when it comes to holding it, you do notice the difference, especially when comparing it to another impact driver in the class. It just has a little bit more weight and heft, and especially where it's a 24 volt battery, that extra cell in it, although it's going to give you potentially more power, it does add extra weight to it, even in a similar battery size. Now they did put a really nice battery gauge on there. I'm sure you've seen that talked about. It's very bright and visible, and you can see it just about any light conditions that you might encounter. Flex did just op opt for a single LED at the base, like a lot of different tool companies use. Although it's definitely sufficient to get the job done, I wish they had gone with maybe one of the dual or tri-beam LEDs that it's up on the actual collet. It really just makes it nicer to work with, especially on these small tools. All right, so now with that all set in stone, let's go ahead and get to the testing and see how this stacks up and how it's going to play out comparing this to some of the other tools that we test. All right, now we're gonna do the half inch uh, spider twist bit with the flex in speed three, full battery. Ready, set, go. Very strong feeling. Um, it slowed down a little bit. This is my first time using this bit, so I don't know if it's getting used to the bit or what, but it was even though it doesn't have like a screw tip on it like some of the speed boards, it almost was pulling its way through there. That felt very strong. Let's do one more. Yeah, lots of power in this one. All right, now moving on to the speed bore. Once again, speed three. Feels very strong, very fast. Plenty of power. If you need to put something in with speed, this is definitely a contender. All right, so now we're gonna give this a go in speed one and just kind of see what it has to offer in, down in its lower speed. Once again, it feels like it has a ton of power. It actually didn't start impacting until quite a ways in compared to other ones I've tested. So pretty decent power there. Speed two. A lot louder than speed one, that didn't seem terribly faster, and then full speed three. Yeah, a lot to go there. So then this almost looks like it's for a smaller bolt or screw. I honestly don't know what that is supposed to do. I may try that on a bigger fastener. So once again, this is on the smaller little bolt setting they have there. So it almost gets to a certain point and then stops it. And that larger bolt setting seemed to go up until a certain point and then just give you almost like speed one type speed. All right, so now the flex multi-speed impact driver, ready, set, go. All right, so there you have it. With the testing, this, this tool does run well enough that I can say it's probably gonna rank in the top half of our impact driver rank chart. I won't have the results until I edit the video, unfortunately. 
but it does offer great power and that's something that is easily felt as you're using the tool. The speed isn't necessarily something that blew me away, but like I said, it is more on par speed wise with the Milwaukee impact driver. And so it's not necessarily something I was expecting to do, but it really does just have loads of power and will continue to deliver that anytime you need it. The weight is a little bit much. I do think it's something that obviously if you're not comparing it directly to another tool, it will blend. But the thing that I've noticed most today is how much I appreciate that button right there. And that is to eject the collet. If they had make this a quick insert collet and then also still giving you that option to be able to eject it that way, it makes it nice because then it becomes where you do not have to take your hand off the tool to reach the collet or manipulate it while you use your other hand to take out the bit. You can leave it where it is and just do that. So if Flex could come out with a quick insert collet that would still have that functionality, I think that is a great feature. And I actually think I'm gonna to get to the point where I wish I had it on other impact drivers as well. I'm curious to see how the impact driver will fill with their new pouch, batter, pouch style batteries that they've announced, but I haven't yet really released to the market. Because if you put a smaller battery on this one, especially if you put even just the 2.5 amp hour, it does still feel pretty good weight wise compared to the five. So maybe with some of the smaller batteries, this thing really starts to shine, still being able to deliver that bigger power on there. Now Flex hit the ground running. They came out with a lot of tool options. And although I think that first Flex face off was a little bit rough, some of the claims they made were a little bit ridiculous. If you do actually start to test these tools, they do compete power wise and it is impressive, especially considering this being their first offering under this brand name. They have obviously had some experience building tools before, both with the Cobalt brand and with some of the other tool companies and the battery technology does appear to be impressive. So these tools are definitely something I would recommend you check out, see if it's something you like, maybe even just go to Lowe's and hold them, see how they feel, see if they're going to be something that's comfortable for you and if they are, I think the power is there. I do really wanna see how they mature as a brand and how they develop kind of the next tier of tools that they come out with. But as far as their first offering, it's pretty darn impressive. So if you like what you saw today, go ahead and give us a like, maybe hit that subscribe button if you wanna keep seeing great videos from us. And if you have any questions, go ahead and hit me up in the comments and we'll try and get those answered for you. Thanks for watching Tinker with Tools. Until next time, you have a great time in your shop.